back. Life with us TV. It's your girl, Linda. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right. We're going to do the top 10 essential first time carnival cruiser tips. Yes. So this is going to be a refresher or just a little mm -mm -mm for those people that are getting ready to go on a cruise and do not know what to expect and want to know what those essential things that you must do right. to go ahead and make this thing a success. Or those people who is getting ready to plan their 2024 cruise because it's that, that time. It is that time. Yeah, because we know we teach that you should be planning your cruise out at least six to 12 months out. That give you enough time to be able to pay for yep. it. Yep, give you the opportunity to pay. Tip number one, make sure that your pre-cruise preparation stuff is intact. What I mean by that is your documentation, make sure that you know what it is that you need to have before boarding. Um, Just blanket it. If you're going to travel with a birth certificate, make sure it's a valid birth certificate and not a hospital certificate. <laughs> I always be joking about the ones with the feet on it. That is not a valid birth certificate. That is a vanity one. That's nope. one that really that's was. That's for mama now. <laughs> that's for the photo album. That's for your grandma's wall. That is not for you to have gain access in places that require a birth certificate. So if you ha are traveling with your birth certificate, make sure that you also have an ID to go along with that. If you are also traveling with your passport, you also need an ID and you may not need it for check in, but what you will need it for is a lot of times when you get off in port. And when we say port, whatever destination you're going to, a lot of times the cruise director or whoever comes over the system will say, take your ID with you because they may ask for it to get you back on the ship or some places there will ask for your ID um, while you're there. So you don't want to be caught slipping. Right. And sometimes if you don't show your ID getting off the ship, they'll make you turn back around and go get it. Exactly. So make sure you know that. Make sure that because we're in the age where we can't deal without our Wi-Fi. I'm <laughs> in that number. I have to have Wi-Fi. It hurts me to even be like, I'm addicted to being plugged in online. I think we all did. I think we all are. In. And we I think all the world has, plugged in. Yeah, the world has conditioned us that everything we do is online. So you <laughs> have to be. So determine which Wi-Fi package is best for you because everybody's most of the time we're going to get one. And if you want to be in touch with people that are back home, where not with you, see which one of those packages would work for you to be able to use like apps like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, if you need to like speak to someone or right. video chat with someone, make sure you're picking the correct Wi-Fi package for that. Make sure you bring little things that's going to make your cruise even better. A lanyard. Yes. Listen, something so simple, but it's going to change your life. There is nothing worse than holding on to that God darn card. Yep. And next thing you know, it, it's gone. And putting it in your pocket is very dangerous, yeah, too. And it can break very easily. Or slip out your pocket. And if somebody see it, you guess what? Drinks on you. Drinks on you. <laughs> Make sure you bring your tumbler. A lot of people like, it's not necessary. But if you're a person that likes to frequent the buffet and you want to just fill up with your ice and your ice water, teas, lemonades, or the bar or whatnot, it is so much easier and safer this day and time. To go ahead and put your stuff in something that's going to keep it insulated and with the lid on it. This day and time, you don't trust nobody. I do not like open cups. Right. I am one of those people. My cup is un. I'm looking. Make sure don't nobody slip me. Me. <laughs> you stupid. And I wake up in Bangkok. Right. <laughs> so make sure that you bring something like that. This is something that we bring, but hasn't really been something that I felt like I 100% needed at all times. Until we started cruising later into the summer months. Yeah. And that is a fan. Baby, and I'm not talking about a fan for your room because I don't need to sleep with a fan. But I'm talking about a neck fan or a handheld fan to oh. take with you. Or like when we were in Greece, I had to yeah. put my neck fan around my neck while we were waiting to get on board because it was just so hot. I'm a person. I don't do a whole lot of sweating. I was wet. A fan, y'all. <laughs> I, I see uh, Tavon has said that uh, to back you up on that lanyard, he said a lanyard is a must. Yes. Because I've lost mine uh, a time or two. I think you said a time or two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, make sure that if you are going into a destination where you're coming in a day early, make sure that you have your pre-cruise hotel 
on lock and the transportation from that hotel to the cruise port. This day and time, I don't even sweat it anymore. I don't go out getting any um, transportation services. I just do Uber or Lyft, preferably yes. Lyft in my case. And that will get you there. Certainly if you're going somewhere like Miami, you literally can hit the thing and your Lyft is there within two minutes. So that is one of those things. And make sure, <laughs> because this is an email that I get a lot. And I always chuckle when I get it because people's like, I don't drink a lot. Should I get the drink package? You answered that question within that question. Yep. No, no, <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> because what you're going to do, one, is you're going to either waste your money or you're, if you're attached to your money like I am, right. you're going to overdo it because you're going to have to drink your money's worth. So if you're not a drinker and you're just a moderate drinker, just go ahead and buy them one by one. It's going to be all right. You, right. And you probably will still come out way less than it would be to get the drink package. But if you know that you are a drinker, go ahead and secure that before you get on board. You get the discount. Well, it's not really a discount, but it is kind of <laughs> like a discount. Go ahead and do that. Um, make sure that if you do not get the drink package, go ahead and secure your bottled waters for your room if that's your thing. Do that ahead of time. Right. And then also, if you want to get some snacks for your cabin, buy those. And if you have a seven day or more sailing, they still do allow you to do the um, order the bottles for your room. Right. Did they jack the price up? Heck yeah. So a lot of people don't even take advantage of that anymore. Right. Make sure you take care of your pre um, prepaid gratuities. If that's your thing, if it's not your thing, we're not going to fight. We're not going <laughs> to fight today. But I do encourage people to do their prepaid gratuities. It takes care of the people that are taking care of you. Yeah. If you that want works to hard. do, yes. If you want to do anything a little extra for the people that may make your, your cruise experience a little bit more special, then go ahead and do that as well. But I am a person that it's mandatory to do it in my opinion. All right. So let's move on to tip number two, which we think this one is very crucial to is your online check-in. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're going with another person or with a family and you guys want to get on the ship together, it's very important that you two weeks before your cruise, mm. that you show up at midnight. So all of you guys can Where get you showing up at though. You showing up on Carnival's website. All right. Cause, yeah. Cause I don't want them to feel yeah, like right. they got, cause sometimes you got to make it clear. Yeah. You showing up on Carnival's website, man. And look, if you got a sweet or you diamond or you platinum, you did get a little bit more time than everybody else. Yeah. You, you get pumped to the front of the line. So if you don't remember anything else, remember two weeks before your cruise. So look at your cruise date, count back two weeks, program that in your phone to remind you to do your online check-in. If you have a travel agent like me, I'm going to let you know. Yep. And then also Carnival is going to send you an email anyway. Right. So don't ignore the emails that you see from Carnival because sometimes they are in abundance, but look at every one of them because it could be something in there that you need. Tip number three is picking out the best cabin. And I stress this Especially if you're a first time cruiser. Yeah, I remember saying the best cabin for the first time. Yes, yeah. We get that all the time. <laughs> we get yeah. it all the time. And um, I wish I had did this, but we were trying to ball on a budget. And sometimes balling on a budget gets you the experience that you actually were trying to run from. I say, unless you're traveling with small children, go ahead and do that balcony right off the rip. Midship, make sure that you have something that you're going to be happy with. And especially with it being your first cruise, you don't know if you're going to get seasick. You don't know if you're going to be claustrophobic. Like, you don't know any of those. Right. But with the cabin, I'm um, a balcony cabin, at least you have the option to be able to sit out on the balcony, get you some fresh air, like take a breather. You don't feel like you're so entrapped into that, sm especially if you're an insider. Right. Those inside <clears throat> cabins are really, really tight. So just make sure you make yourself comfortable the first time around. And then from there, the more you cruise, then the more you can experience different cabin types. But I do say, if you're not traveling with small children, do the balcony. I'm telling you. If you game are changer. traveling with small children, and I say don't do a balcony with small children, is because of the safety issue that they make. Because children will get into skit that you would never believe. But if you ask them to go to the refrigerator <laughs> and get something, they don't understand that. 
Ooh, but they can figure out how to open a balcony door. So I would say just go ahead and do an ocean view or something like that if you have really small children to make sure that everybody is safe and that you can sleep peacefully at night knowing that they are not really, you know, trying to get out. All right. All right. So now we at tip number four. We get this a lot about Ooh. the sign and sale card. And we're going to continue to keep iterating because we know that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing because Carnival. It's totally different. Yeah, Carnival have a cashless system. And think about us. Well, we, all of them. Yeah, all of them have, yeah. But we so used to breaking out our debit card or breaking out our cash when we go to pay for stuff. We ain't used to having another piece of plastic that we ain't familiar with. So Carnival sign and sale card is your access on and off the ship. It's your access to get into your cabin, and it's also your access to be able to purchase things on the ship. You cannot use cash. Except for the casino. Except for the casino. You cannot use your debit card. You cannot use your credit card. It you has to, to be attached yes. to your sign and sale. Now, your sign and sale, you can fund it in several different ways. When I say fund it, it when you when it comes time for you to do your online check-in, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about this right now. It's two weeks before your cruise. They're going to ask you how you want to fund your sign and sale. On there, you tell them if you want to do cash, your debit card, or your credit card, or Carnival gift card, or any other kind of gift card that has a Visa or Master logo, you'll be able to enter it then. If you decide that, hey, I don't want to use a prepaid method or a Visa or a deb debit card, anything like that, and you want to do cash, you got to wait till you get on the ship. They actually have kiosks for you to do that. Or, or you services. can go to guest service. I'm going to say uh, a sale of services. That's, Same that's virgin. Yeah. You can go to the uh, Carnival uh, mm -hmm. customer service, and they will add the cash to your sign and sale. The other thing we get is, okay, so if I fund my sign and sale card with cash, can I get my money back? No, I'm going to get it. <laughs> They're going to mail it to me. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you can. So you can actually go back to um, guest services. I get it right. Yes, you and did. yep, and they can do it for you, or they will send a check to you in the mail. But it's a certain amount. Hey, yes, don't it's, ask it's, me right now. It's a certain amount. I can't yeah. think of the amount. So right don't now. be leaving money on the table. Just go and cash it out the night before you right. get off the cruise. Also, we recommend not using your debit card. Hello. On your sign and sale because of the holes that they put on your car. I see somebody had asked something about, said somebody told them about the $200 holes. Yes, they do that. And the reason they do that is to protect themselves, to make sure that what you're charging on your sign and sale card ain't fictitious. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make sure that you're good for it. Yeah, that you're good, that you ain't trying to ball out and you ain't balling out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why they do it. Also, we tell you not to do it because. Sometimes back in your checking account, you 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 taking a trip, you might only have a few hundred dollars left in your checking account. They putting all them holes on it, and then you get back home and you don't have access to your extra cash. Uh, or you're bouncing. Yeah, or your stuff is bouncing. You got you you don't pay your electric bill, and that joke gonna bounce. Your cable bill and bounce. You, you come home and you bounce because <laughs> you was on a cruise. So that's why we highly recommend you either funding it with cash or, or funding credit. it with your credit card. And people ask us, well, do they do holes on the credit cards? Yes. yes but they, it doesn't but, tie but your money but up. But it ain't going to tie your money up. And then also we recommend, uh, and we're probably going to get here since I'm on this line, that if you <laughs> do an excursion uh, or get off the ship, you can't use your sign to sell off the ship. Right. But if you want to buy stuff off the ship, we recommend either taking your debit card and no. cash. No, I credit mean, card. Oh, credit card, I'm sorry. Cash. Take that back. No debit card. Your credit card. Or your cash, so that way you won't be victim to any fraud while you're off the ship. And I'm not saying that's gonna happen to you, but it's best to protect yourself yeah. because not everybody in this world is honest. Yeah, and that's even like in real life, walking around now, like most people are getting away from using their debit card because if something happens with your debit card, it's so much harder to recoup those funds than it would be to have a credit card. Um, company like fight for you to get the money back. Number five, we get this a lot and a lot of people have fallen victim to it and we have as well. So mm -hmm. let me go ahead and explain something that I do get a lot <laughs> <laughs> that people will be like, I've prepaid my gratuities, but I just bought the drink package and then there's an 18% gratuity added on to that as well. Why is that? Well, when you do prepaid gratuities, it's not taking care of the bar staff. It literally is taking care of the essential workers that's making your stay even better. 
everybody doesn't drink. Everybody doesn't participate in, you know, drinking at the bar or going to get sodas or things like that. So that staff is not equated into the prepaid gratuities. If they were, those right. prepaid gratuities would probably be double of what they are right now. So what they do is you have prepaid gratuities that takes care of the restaurants, um, the dining, the um, people that do your room and stuff like that. Those people, because you're going to need their services the entire time you're on the ship. So if you decide, hey, I want to go to the bar, there's going to be a gratuity added on to that immediately. If you buy a drink package, they're going to add the gratuity, gratuity on to that as well. Why do I say that? Because if you go to the bar, do not add another tip onto that receipt unless you want to. It's included. We have fallen victim to that yes. because we're so accustomed to somebody gives you a receipt, you sign off on it, you put one or two dollars on there for the bar staff, and you walk away. Well, you've put one or two dollars on there, and plus the eighteen percent gratuity that they've already added into the par- um, price of your drink. Now, if right. you want to do that, that's cool. Ain't no thing, but don't do it if you don't need to or you're not meaning to. All right. So the next tip, which is tip number. Six. Uh, I like this one. <laughs> now, this one right here is very, very important because this one can really, really break your trip. Even if and you, relationships. And relationship is for the upcoming 2024 and beyond, or if you're traveling this year, pick a compatible travel partner. Hello. Let me tell you, we can say that every time we come on here. Because not everybody are the same. So you the type of person that you like to lay out by the pool. You like to lay out at the beach, get in the beach water, get in the pool, take some shots, go to the club and dance. You just outgoing. You like going. You, you, you don't want to go to no museum. You don't want to <laughs> hear no, uh, no history about this and, you know, different, all the stuff like that. But you just want to go and turn up and have you a good time. See if the person that you're going with is down for that. They be like, "Hey, yeah, I ain't doing this." Yeah, I, I just want to, you know, read a book on Alito Lido that. Uh, you might not. Want, you might not be compatible. Might be, it is. It is. It is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, when you're the type of person that you're looking for a good turn up time on a cruise, everybody that's going with you, you kind of want them to be the same way because right. it actually adds to the vibe. And don't mean that everybody on the trip is going to be that way, but mm-hmm. it was just you. And a few others where you guys and all of you guys are different. I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Also, pick your your travel partner wisely, and this comes from a travel agent standpoint. You don't pay your payments, and you paying them, and you paying them, mm-hmm. and homegirl over here ain't paid nothing but the deposit. So now y'all are at final payment date, mm-hmm. and in order for person A to go on the trip, they're going to pay have to pay what person B hadn't paid this entire time, or they have to make a decision of not going at all. Right. Or C, which usually never happens, is finding someone to take their place and paying all of that money at their last minute. And most people aren't in a financial position to do that. Right. And if that travel partner, when you ask them to travel with you, and if they just start humming and hollering, Cut just it. a little bit. Cut it. Don't do it. Because if you, and like we get it all the time when people ask us, what can I say to my cousin or what can I say to Nothing. my mom? What can I say to my friends to, to get them, them, convince them no. to get on a cruise? Let me tell you, you don't want to convince nobody, nobody to do nothing because when you get them on the trip, now you're going to have to convince them to have fun, convince them to do this. Come on, let's do that. And now your whole trip is ruined because you your whole trip was a pet rally. Huh. You're trying to hype them up the whole time, and now your trip is destroyed because you couldn't enjoy yourself because you're trying to be the hype man. Hello. And don't go about with, with nobody broke. Anyway, let's move on. But that's one of the reasons why we created the groups like yeah. Grown and Sexy, so that we can get people together that you want to travel, and you want to travel with like-minded people with the same vibes you got, that you want to have fun, that on a vacation you feel like family. Are taking bookings for our 2024 grown in sexy Virgin Voyages cruise. We're gonna yeah. do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this: if you really want to go, do not drag your feet because we opened it up last week for bookings, and we're over 70% booked 
for the allotted amount of people that we said we were going to take. Number seven. Yes. I'm about to piss y'all off, but it's okay. <laughs> if you're going on a cruise, get the, I can't make something rhyme. Purchase travel insurance. Um, in the last three months, I have seen numerous people that at final payment date, no fault of their own, life right. was lifing, lose all of their money. Not some, not a little bit, not a future cruise credit, all of their money. Because once you hit final payment date, that cruise company it has betted on your money to go ahead and fund whatever it is they need to do to get that ship in tip top shape for you. Yep. And at that point, you ain't getting it back unless you have insurance that the reason that you have in the cancel is a covered reason. And then you can put a claim in with your insurance to get the money back. It's no different than having Apple care on your iPhone. Yep. It's no different than having insurance on your car. Yes. Life be life and mistakes happen. And sometimes it's not a fault of your own. You can get sick and just can't go. Yep. You have every intentions of going. Some people say, well, I feel like it's a wasted thing. It, it is when you don't need it. Right. But mm -hmm. when you do need it, hundred dollars, 2000. John said you done pissed me off. That's all right, John. <laughs> we still friends. We still friends. But it's something that it breaks my heart as an agent to have to tell somebody is it's done. Do I still be fighting? Yup. Yeah. Have I been successful even when the person was clearly wasn't supposed to get it? I have been. But, but that was, that's but that was not a guarantee. That's because that's because they have you as an agent to fight for them. But if you on your own, you might not be able to fight it for yourself. And even having an agent, sometimes they just be like, Lynette, yeah, you do your thing. All right. So tip number eight, which this one has every time we get this one, this one really resonates and really helps people out tremendously because hey, Sarah. I, I like what you said, Cersei, that when you travel in groups, you find your tribe. Love it. Man. So I'm going to say the next oh. tip is joining the Facebook group for your sailing. How you do that? You go to Facebook, you type in the name of the ship and the date of your cruise. If anybody has created a group, it, pop right it should pop right up for you. And then within them groups, you can start to find your tribe before you even get on the ship. Uh, I'm telling you, it's fun. Game, it's fun. It's a game changer. People will be like, hey, can we meet up? Can we do gifts exchange? You know, hey, can I meet y'all at Red Frog Pub? Meet you at Sail Away? Hey, let's do a bar crawl. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so much that you can find out by joining that Facebook group. So mm -hmm. if you definitely planning on a cruise, do that. A-S-A-P. It is. It's fun. I've met people in there, and y'all probably heard me say this, and we've literally been in touch with each other since the first time we met in a cruise group. Then, crazy enough, most of the time we end up on the same sailings and we don't plan it. <laughs> Every time I'm like, not you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? I said, we really need to start talking and communicating because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. All right. We get this a lot and there's really no way to answer it, but there is a way to answer it. So what should I be wearing on my cruise? And it really depends on the climate that you are going to and the climate that you are sailing from. Right. For instance, we are getting ready to do a cruise at the end of September, October. Usually, it's a little cooler here. Usually. Yeah. It's Virginia. You we don't, just know. don't know. You just <laughs> never know. We find out when we get there. So usually it's cooler. And then as you sail out, it starts to get warmer. So what do I have to do? I have to pack for two different climates so that I can, my body can acclimate and my wardrobe can do the same. Right. <laughs> So it depends on what it is that you like to wear on vacation. If you're a person that don't swim, don't bring no swimsuits. Like some people are like, why do I have to bring a swimsuit? Well, if you're not a swimmer or you don't plan on getting in any water, don't mm -hmm. do that. But maybe get you a nice like sundress or a romper or something like that. So if you are at the beach, then you are comfortable being at the beach. Right. I'm a big person, um, big, big one saying don't bring no, no jeans. That's just an uncomfortable fabric to be having on your body on you. vacation. Yeah. Now, granted, 
if you're in a group and sometimes we'd be like, bring this where that it's for photo ops. <laughs> <laughs> We're not walking around with jeans shorts on <laughs> or we just walked on the ship with it. But jeans are a very uncomfortable fabric, in my opinion, to be walking around in. Yeah. So just do like lightweight clothing, especially when you're going into these tropical climates. Like yeah. I said, sundresses, rompers for guys. Get you a two piece linen. Let that hamburger meat show. Yeah, because all I do is I just I bring, basketball shorts. bring my basketball shorts. White beaters. Yep. My wife beaters, my regular T-shirts that I get from Target or order them on um, Amazon. Uh, also make sure you have your water shoes. If you anything yeah, like Lord, us, I don't I like hate for the bottom of my naked feet to touch the bottom of mm -mm. the boot or the bottom of the sand, all that. I, I don't no, like I, it. I gotta, yeah, I gotta have some shoes. So water shoes, a must, uh, um, formal night attire. Yes. So make sure that you're, you're prepared for that. Do you have to get all glammed down to the ball gown? Nope. Nope. But get so, a little jazz. So fellas, get a little you, cute. you can do a button down and your slacks and mm -hmm. your dress shoes. Yeah, you good to go. Don't make the mistake of wearing like a pair of like cargo, like dressy kind of cargo shorts. Um, we only had this problem one time, and that was on the celebration where we went to a specialty dining on formal night, and they turned him around. Yeah, and they were like, "You're gonna have to have long pants on." They didn't care about the shirt, but it was the long pants that he that were required. And fellas, listen to me good, because this is the mistake that we <laughs> that we usually make. Don't forget your belt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is an easy one to forget, though. Yeah. Because you're wearing all lightweight clothes yeah. the entire cruise, and then you have to remember to bring a belt. Yeah, and the belt. And most, your shoes. Belt and your most shoes. Likely is gonna be, yeah, and your belt most likely is going to be for your slacks. Or I also bring at least one or two pair of cargo shorts, too. Um, and that's for if we're doing something formal that I don't know, so I just be prepared for it. And I'll do this last one, because this kind of is my expertise. Um, yes. I get this a lot and it's really, it's a way to answer it. And then there's another way to answer it. And I'll explain what I mean. What cruise ship should I go on as a first timer? Now I have two different answers because I am a person that I cruise from my local home port. So I don't really have a choice <laughs> in what <laughs> ship it is that I'm going to get on from my home port. So for us, for the last few years, it's been the sunrise. It's getting ready to be the sunshine. It's been the magic and you said it? celebration. No, home port. Oh, home port. Oh, I'm sorry. So this is what I say. If you have to take the effort in taking an airplane to get somewhere, my choices would be for you to start at the dream class level, which are the dream, the breeze, um, the magics. And then go up from there, the vistas, the horizons, the um, panorama. Um, and of course, go up to the big babies. That's where I'm at right now. The celebrations, the Mardi Gras, the Jubilees. Make it count. So if I have to fly up out of here, right. I'm going to go to the bigger and the newer ships. Unless there's a reason. And usually the reason is... I'm either going for a particular itinerary, and most of the time you can't be really picky about which ship goes where. So if I really want to go to on a different itinerary, you just got to kind of go on whatever ship that itinerary is going when you have to go. Um, <clears throat> some people aren't picky about the ships at all. They just, whatever sails, they own it. Yep. I'm, I'm not that person. <laughs> I'm not that person. There are certain ships that I, I, I want to go on record and say you probably will never you catch me out. <laughs> Never. Never. Woo. But for my home port, yeah. You kind of got to do what you got to do because we no use yeah. we use our home port as our family vacations. Yeah. So that's when all of us get together, the aunts, the grandmas, um extended cousins, you know, play cousins, people that just came along exes of exes because we still keep them in the family um if we probably keep them more than we keep our real family in the family <laughs> and they just come along to our home port we have a good time and then we're going on about our business all right y'all we are out straight from the va the dirty dirty south to uh to, to that. That.